This is probably the most important part of what was yeah. talked about earlier today and, uh, and as part of my presentation. Uh, we have run uh, for uh, about, I guess this is our, our third year, uh, and uh, we have uh, spayed and neutered over 4,000 cats uh, for low-income people. We charge $20 if you have the $20. And if you don't, we will take care of them. If you come in and you have a female with a litter, obviously you're bringing the female in to be spayed, right? And we will, we will take the kittens and, uh, and uh, set them up for adoption and uh, make sure that they're all spayed and moved. What we hate to hear, just like all of you, is somebody comes in with a female and maybe they have two kittens. And we say, well, is that just two kids? No, no, I, you know, the, I gave the others away. Yeah. yeah, you know, the other six are out there not spading either. So uh, this has been a very successful program. We are currently looking for another sponsor. We had a very significant sponsor drop out. The Pet Fund Alliance, the people that are putting on this conference today, are supporters. Uh, financially to assist us with this. The $20 covers my end, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the shelter facility, all the meds, and uh, anesthetic, all the things that you need you know, to run a uh, surgical unit. Um, and this past Sunday, there's always a no-show component, and everyone has uh, a, a appointment. And we booked 150 people, 150 cats. Uh, and the appointment for everyone was 8 o'clock. So they come in and they line up with their animals. Uh, we do our intake. And we did, when I, when I left early afternoon, uh, we, were, we were over 120. So I think we probably did about 130, which, which foots. When, uh, tied to the no-shows. We'll recontact the no-shows and attempt to reschedule them uh, for another time. Tremendous program oh, for us. Uh, we do school programs. So rescues, I'm sure, are big time on this, rescues. Uh, so we do, uh, we'll come out to your school, we'll bring an animal, Hopefully it's a good one, nobody gets fit. And, uh, uh, and we attempt to incorporate uh, young people into, into our shelter. How am I doing here? I'm, 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 I'm tough. So. All right. Uh, we, we run a teacher's pet program. Uh, we have at-risk youth who are actually housed, you know, at like Children's Village. Uh, we bring them in uh, twice a week and they work with our dogs. So we commit a dog to a young person uh, for 12 weeks. And then we have a regular graduation process that we go through. Catch program, companion animals touching seniors. We go out to senior centers, not nursing homes. and. Uh, we con the seniors into fostering a cat, <laughs> and we give, them a, we give them a litter box and some food and what have you, and we say, when we run low on cats, we'll give you a call, and we'll pick the cat up. <laughs> and, uh, back in for a and of course, we've never called. <laughs> we've never taken a cat these, these are some of the volunteers. Uh, that we have that operate uh, come in on a daily basis. They're godsends. They get every single animal out of their cages every single day. Uh, Eagle Scouts, uh, Girl Scouts, we have birthday parties at our shelter, all right? Using kids as a re resource, especially rescues. This be a, a great find for rescues to incorporate with a Girl Scout troop or a Brownie troop. Because those are ongoing. As those kids graduate, it becomes a troop function. 
uh, of however it is that they're assisting you. Uh, community service kids at the high school, uh, a special day at the shelter, we bring in kids to do uh, for their birthdays. It's a little bit risky. We do adoption events. These are vendors on this side that support what you saw earlier with the gazebo. And on that side are mostly rescues, all, all rescues that participate in uh, our adoption events. I'll, I'll wind it up right now. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, those are just some of the some of the events that we participate in. Uh, we are running into a problem as uh, as everyone has uh, with uh, uh, cats. We are no longer going to be able to pick up cats because of budget constraints. And so, in order to keep our uh, shelter population down, uh, we are doing satellite operations. So we are signing up veterinarians in appropriate places that will draw from us and adopt out uh, cats. So with that, I'm sorry, I'm going to set it up. So if you want to ask questions, all right. Well, I'm going to find it. If there are any questions, I'd be glad to. By the way, this is one of my office pets. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they're tired of looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you know if there's grant money available through the Michigan Pet Fund Alliance? I know they helped you with your um, With our state neuter program. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I go way back to one of the originators of, of the organization. And uh, yeah, I would talk to Debbie about that. And uh, I know that their money is also very tight. And the uh, supporter that we lost uh, was paying for about 50 percent, so that was a big hit for us. Yeah. One more. Question. One more. Do you microchip cats and dogs before adoption? I'm sorry. Do you microchip cats and dogs before adoption? You know what? We just started microchipping. Uh, we have not microchipped in the past, and we have we're going to a new <coughs> inventory system, if you will, in the uh, uh, shelter, uh, which is uh, RFD. So we can just walk down to a kennel aisle and we can shoot that kennel aisle and it will tell us every animal and every kid. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Good volunteers can get on base here close. We do. We're, we're never close. We always have staff and uh, our prisoners are always there to do clean. So the volunteers come in, for instance, on Sundays. Uh, and they're, they're allowed to be there from 7.30 till about 1.00. Uh, and it's a half a day as opposed to a full day. And we do have volunteers that fill that team. So. Yeah, over here, I guess. Um, do you do any type of outreach to get in contact with volunteers? Because I live in Oakland County, and I have friends with a bunch of shelters in the area. And for some of them, like, it took a month for them to get back to me with my application. Uh -huh. And it's just, I feel like there's, it's yeah. hard to volunteer. It is. Uh, we have our applications on our website online, so you can fill out the application online. And then the fellow that you saw, Steve, uh, he would then, it's his responsibility to kind of like to know if he didn't, uh, his, oh, no, responsibility, okay. Okay. his responsibility to contact that person, bring him in, do a very brief interview, uh, give him a tour, show him the ropes, where they sign in and sign, you know. And so, yeah, we have a regular system. Uh, we don't have a budget to advertise, so we don't do that. But it is on our website. Yeah. I don't know who was next here, so I guess. Do you do any training with the dogs that come in? Say you got a timid dog in a yeah. structured program on any side? Yeah. We have a professional dog trainer uh, that uh, uh, gives us some assistance. We do not have a structured program, uh, perhaps like you're identifying, but we do a lot with the volunteers and we do a lot with uh, the kids. That, that's a formally run program with professional trainers that run that program. 
So uh, we get some benefit out of that. See, that's how it started out in water. It was when it started out in water. Teacher's pet. That's who we have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you had a volunteer on Sunday. Do the volunteers actually have a staff person there? Oh, yeah. So yes. do they come in in the evenings over? After hours, you evening? No. no. But you always do have to have a staff person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because we're prison. Oh, we they're not there. No, but. Hours. No, they're there on Sundays. Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So for that, we're required to have a staff person. Yeah. We'll have more time right after yeah. this, but Let's, it's going to take yeah. about 15 minutes to get through this PowerPoint. Yeah. But thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, Larry touched on a lot already, so I'm going to flip through some of these rather quickly so it will go fast. Um, so if you're, if you're not here for two screw bowls charging your doctor, you're in the wrong place right now. <laughs> so, um, it is going to take a lot of work if you're going to really increase your adoption. There's definitely a lot of things you can do that you're probably not doing now that, that even we, as hard as we try, I come to these things and I learn more things every time. Um, one of the things is, are you use, utilizing your potential to adopt animals? This is actually one of our staff people that's dressed up like this. <laughs> it's a Halloween. Um, does the community know where you are, who you are? One of the biggest things we um, faced at our shelter was nobody knew where we were. Um, six years later, after I've been there, they still said, well, we didn't know you had animals. Well, we have 200 animals on any given day in our shelter, and they still didn't know. And we've done so much to increase our awareness. I'm shocked when I hear that, but it's still an ongoing issue. They need to know when they can adopt, where they can adopt. Um, and many shelters don't have an actual adoption program. They simply adopt out animals on the side. So that, that has to change. Um, you have to start from within. As Lori was saying, good public relations. No matter what we tell the public or the media, uh, none of it will matter if we're not doing at home what we're telling everybody we're going to do. Um, do you need to do some house cleaning? Um, <laughs> this is a hoarding case. What's kind of funny about this, this actually became uh, a featured story in a Paris magazine. They were actually going online for a hoarding case, and we had this published on a hoarding case, and they uh, use it in a Paris magazine. So that funny. That's, that's actually a little piggy bank that he's uh, catch pull on that. <laughs> Um, recovering from a bad rap, I'm not going to go over this, but all of us have been there, um, and I know a lot of you are rescues, um, but poor customer service. If you're not answering that phone and people are calling you, I mean, it quickly flies like fire that, you know, they never answer their phone, I can't ever get a hold of them. Same with us. Our phones ring constantly. Um, you have to turn that public um, customer service around. Less than pristine shelter, same thing that Larry was saying. you got to clean it up. You've got to do some basics. You've got to make it smell better. Get rid of that odor if you can. Almost impossible to know. Um, poor animal care, as they said this morning, you've got to fix that issue. If you've got poor animal care, that needs to be a priority. We've all got the same excuses. No money, limited resources, inadequate facilities. Um, but there are some things you can do. But you really need to attack it in small amounts. If you just take on a huge task, you will just feel defeated before you even start. So do some small things. Um, use the volunteers and solicit supporters. And, and, and I'll, the slides in the future will kind of tell you a little bit how to do that. Let the public see the effort you're doing. Anything you do that's an improvement, you need to publicize it. Send out a press release. I've also got some press release samples to show you some of the things we've done. But anything you do at all, from even just simply painting the front lobby, you need to take pictures of it, put it on your website, your Facebook, whatever. Um, your staff is a big part of your foundation. If you don't fix the foundation, nothing's going nothing's to work. Um, you got to get organized. Um, I formed a steering committee. In fact, uh, there's, a, there's a person in the audience today that was part of that steering committee when we first started six years ago, Holly, from Voices. And um, that steering committee was instrumental in all the major improvements we've made from completely changing the way we did things at the shelter um, to uh, completely building new channels, everything. So a steering committee was very effective. And um, a lot of people are afraid of that, but you can select some of the people you want on there and start small. They can bring you a volunteer base as well. Um, don't recreate the wheel. Um, there are numerous, numerous volunteer opportunities out there. Um, I put some programs on here, some samples, websites. I have handouts, too, that have the same program on it. Unfortunately, I only brought 25. But I do have those, and I'm going to be giving my flash drive to them so they can uh, download it on a disk for you. But you can also email me, too. 
Um, working on image, just like Larry said, you've got to clean it up. Um, we uh, got rid of some ancient old um, chain link and put in the glass and the, the panels. Um, if you decide to go to the glass panels, call me first, I'll tell you all the things we did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I would do this differently. I love the glass, but I don't like those panels. Uh, it's very dark to see the animals behind them. But the animals liked them because it gave them privacy. They weren't out there all the time and just getting all that um, attention. Um, but if a person comes to a shelter, they've got a bad time, they tell everybody, and they tell everybody, and it's just, it's terrible. So you've really got to make sure you're, you're giving them a good image. A quick and easy fix to doing that first step, that small thing, is, is a paint job. It really is. You'd be surprised. One, get volunteers to do it. They spread the word that what's going on. Take pictures of it. Two, put out a press release that you need paint. And people will donate the money to the paint, and our companies will bring the paint. And there's another story. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of awareness in just that one project. You can really utilize it and get a big bang for your buck. So, um, and these are students that came in and did the painting. However, it can be a nightmare if you have students because when they leave, there's paint on the floor, the lids are left in the sink, the dishes, are, I mean, it's just a mess. You, but we learn to coordinate a responsible person with them when they do the project. So. Uh, and murals, just as Larry said, this mural was done by a volunteer. Um, we don't get very many talented trustees, believe me. <laughs> we're, we're down to the bottom of the barrel right now because they're letting them out in the middle of the week. So <laughs> um, but this was done by a volunteer. She did this, and I mean, it just lit up our shelter. It really did. It, it was just really wonderful. And we got a lot of press on that as well. I mean, it was amazing. That thing went like wildfire on Facebook. Um, amenities for the animals. You don't have to spend a dime on them. You put a press release out that you're looking for comms and you're looking for the cheese whiz. I mean, we got cases of cheese whiz to stuff in those comms. And then you need comm stuffers. I mean, that's another thing. We got volunteers in that did nothing but stuff the comms and freezing for us. But this is a Girl Scout. And you said the Girl Scouts are great. She built all these little beds to put in all the cat cages. Mm -hmm. Um, because we have some cats in cages, some cats that aren't, but they wanted to have these little bits. And they all snap off and they're very easy to clean. But um, when they see you providing those creature comforts, they, it changes their whole perception of your shelter that you take the time to do these little pieces. And uh, it is, it's in the detail and it sure is. Um, new signage, I mean, I mean, Larry, I know you touched on all this too, but I can't tell you how important that is. You need to walk through yourself and start taking down those ratty old yellow stained signs you've got and put a request out to volunteers or an email out or even in the paper. You're looking for some graphic artist. You're looking for someone that can help you with signage. There you go again. You're letting them know you're making some, some improvements at the shelter. You're getting help and you're getting the press release all in one. Um, these were um, the... the the sheriff's logo there was done by a volunteer, that, but we've since changed our logo since then. Um, but the doggy meet and greet area, we have those all over the shelter. They're really, really wonderful. And it also helps your customers in the building know where to go and what to do. Um, we still have a long way to go on our signage, but, but it's, it's a beginning. Now, my staff would kill me if they saw that picture. Hi, <laughs> Paula, can you believe that? Now, these are really wonderful people. This is, now, they are the, the nicest people you'll ever meet. And look at that. Can you imagine walking in and having those people greet you? <laughs> and, and that was just, some, one of our volunteers who does our Facebook, she just took the picture and she sent it to me. She goes, oh my God, look at this. And so I threatened to use it against them. They do not know it's in this presentation. <laughs> but don't they look just hateful and mean? And they just happen to glance at it. And they're really wonderful people. Uh, and Jesse's not really sleeping. He's just faking it. But but I'm sure there were many times he was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our dispatcher. Well, he's retired now. But um, it really makes a difference what your public sees when they walk in and see your staff. I mean, I mean, it's it's terrible if you. I, I hate walking into a place where I feel like they didn't even look at me. They didn't even say, "Oh, just a minute." I don't care if there's a line out the door. If you go, "Just a minute," I'm going to be right with you. I have sympathy for that person, and I will wait forever. But if you just keep blowing me off and not making eye contact, I, I don't want to come back. So we, we've really tried to work really hard on that because we had some major issues. And there, there's Teresa again. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I had to do something to make it feel better if she ever discovers this. But um, if, you, if you can get them to buy into your mission, that's another part of it. You've got to hire people with passion. You can train them to fill out forms. You can train them to do a bite report. But you cannot train passion. So if you're, if, you're training, if you're hiring people who just want a job to work for the county to get good benefits, Boy, that's gonna it's, it's gonna bite you later because I got a whole bunch of those. Mm -hmm. They're almost all gone now. Um, 
You have to be willing to get organized if you really want to increase your adoptions. You've got to market those pets. You've got to market them. The people aren't coming to you. Uh, you've got to collaborate with other shelters, and you cannot badmouth other shelters. We do a lot of adoptions as a result of other agencies referring us, and we refer them back. You've got to do that. You've really got to keep a list of the other shelters in your area, their phone numbers, help each other out by, by referring because um, what they don't have, you might. And, and that could mean maybe three adoptions a week, maybe as a result of that, but hey, that's three adoptions a week. You add that up after a year, it's a lot. Um, consider the unique and unusual programs, and you need to ask for help. You've got to start asking a lot of people for help. You'd be surprised what you'll get once you ask. This, is that showing? I don't know why that didn't do that. Um, but it talks about, I think it's 61 million dogs and households, 68 million cats and households. 59% of households in the U.S. include at least one pet, but only 20% of those pets are coming from us. We are missing the boat. We have the most variety. I mean, we have the largest number of animals, but yet only 20% come from us. We are really missing the marketing strategy there. And so we've got to get to the people more. Um, this is one of our newest officers, very passionate officer, um, had no animal control experience whatsoever, and now she's one of the leading officers on dog fighting and stuff. She works with the Office of Inspector General and actually the officer that did the case in Monroe with all the pit bulls. So very active, very good. Um, but you've got, you've got to, you know what, take those positives and just push them. This is just a random picture we took. She was filling out a report and we took the picture and we post it everywhere. And everybody just likes that image that, you know, the dog friendly and the officer smiling. So, but we've got to prove people wrong when they think that we don't care. Um, and this talks to more <coughs> us about your procedures, your policies. I've actually, I've got some of our, um, I've only got 12 packets for um, the uh, interview application, our contract, just as a sample to see. I go to websites of other agencies all the time and I steal stuff all the time. There's some great stuff out there. They'll show you their adoption contracts, their applications, and I'll just take this sentence from that one or this one from another one. But you do not have to recreate the wheel. Look at what some of the great agencies are doing out there. But I'll tell you what, you've got to have policies. If you're doing adoptions, and especially if you're doing mobile adoptions, and, um, and I've, I've got to get to get that, um, that's important that you've got those because you're going to fall into a, a, a big trap of, of questions and, and problems with people. Um, these are actually veterinarians um, here. <laughs> and they actually sponsor this Halloween adoption event at their clinic. Um, so that, it's, it's about thinking outside the box. When people say, hey, we come to my place, you're like, oh, there's one more event, I can't handle it. But you know, we threw this together with a couple volunteers and we adopted, I think, six animals. But look at senior citizen programs giving discounts to seniors. Uh, mobile and, and traveling adoptions. Senior pets, we reduce our senior pets five years enough to half price. Foster programs are huge, and I know I was looking at your program there. But our foster program, anything that goes into foster never comes back. It's always adopted. Fosters are amazing. A lot of work, but it is worth it. Um, prison programs also, and I've got some links to some prison programs. I mean, because they take them, they train them, they give them back to you, or they don't give them back to you. They've already got a list of people waiting for them because they know how to pick up a paper for a senior citizen who can't bend anymore. They know how to uh, hear the doorbell ring and that sort of thing. So prison programs you might want to look at. If you can send six dollars down there once a month, that might be a, a well worth the project. I used to do it in Lexington, Oklahoma, and it was wonderful. Um, they had graduation centers, it was pretty cool. Corporate sponsors like the veterinarians here. Um, bring on the well-trained staff and volunteers. One of the biggest gripes you get is, you know, the staff didn't know anything, the volunteers didn't know anything. Train, train, train. Try to communicate and get as much training as, as possible. Um, we love the volunteers to be in our shelter. They're positive, they're energetic, they're always smiling. Um, so the public really likes that. And then they think it's your staff and then so you get all this extra credit. So that's really good. But um, they come in with a lot of stuff. So uh, to get them trained and try to incorporate them. And I know most of you, you're all rescues. If you are, you're already volunteers and stuff. And so you're probably burned out now like some of our staff. <laughs> so get new volunteers. Um, you've got to provide good records. Um, be very transparent. Let them know what you're doing. You have nothing to hide. You're all doing good work. Um, post your information to the public to view. The more you post, the less they're saying, well, what about that? Why isn't that happening? Um, just post as much as you can, your hours, your fees, your policies. Um, if you've got very strict policies or, uh, pertaining to certain types of animals, you might want to publish those because it really kind of um, gets rid of some of those arguments. Well, I didn't know this. I came all the way here. If you can get it on your website, it's even better. There's some adoption program websites. 
too there for you. I mean, there's a lot of them out there, though. I just put some to help you out. Okay. Then, of course, show me the animals. You've really got to show me animals. I'm telling you what, with this new technology front here, you've got to be doing it. That was one of my foster dogs, the owner. She was, she was like a 12-year-old pit bull. I mean, how do you, you know, 12-year-old yeah. pit bull. But now she's living up towards Mackin Island, as a matter of fact. And they saw her on Facebook, not Facebook, on our website. Um, Facebook, web, the Twitter, I don't know Twitter, but I'm telling you, Facebook for us is fabulous. If you can find a person to do Facebook for you, that you can uh, you know, keep reined in, my God, they do a wonderful job. Your website, if you can't do it, find someone who can. You know, and they, you don't have to have a computer in your shelter. I mean, you can find someone who's really tech, you know, savvy, and they can do it for you. These are all free websites. And it's amazing that people are not using them, getting your animals up. But the time we're wasting <coughs> these, these physical things, we're not thinking smarter, we're thinking harder. We've got to go back to thinking smarter. You, 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 you use the technology, and it will save you time and adopt the animals out. Um, this is astounding to me that 5.2 million potential adopters every month go to Pet Finder. I mean, that's amazing. If you're not on Pet Finder, you need to be. You need to be at all the other sites. Um, so that, that's pretty amazing. Um, don't back to shelter, doesn't have a computer stop you. you. You can find somebody who has a computer that got a website, have them help you out. I'm going to scoop through these kind of fast now. Um, as I said, Facebook is phenomenal right now. It, I mean, we got a lot of animals off of Facebook. And we get a lot of foster homes off Facebook, and we get a lot of donations off Facebook. Um, five to seven million companion animals enter the shelter every year. We all know that, so I'm kind of speaking to the choir here. But, as they were talking about, we need to move those animals and move them fast. It, it, you've got a lot of animals waiting. So you know that there's no end to that supply, unfortunately. That's my dog, Mr. Uh The media, absolutely. You need to contact the media. You need to tell them whenever you have a story. Just because they don't print it doesn't mean they didn't want to. It's just other stories bump it. But if you keep sending them a story, you know, if you're not sending them a story at least once a month, you're crazy. You need to send them once a month a story. Anything you're doing, pictures if you can. But you got to do it once a month. Um, they'll pick it up, and then the next time they're looking for a story, they're going to go to you guys because they remember you. So if you're not contacting, you're losing you're losing a lot of potential to get your animals exposed. This is our pet of the week right here. In fact, um, Evan, the one Evan on the left, he just got an award last night at a humanitarian Um Delegate. Um, get, give it to people who know how to do that. If you've got some good writers, you've got some graphic artists. Get them to do it for you. They're looking for something to do. They can't go to a shelter because they can't see the animals or they don't have the time, but they can do stuff at home. So get them to do it for you. Um, that's another one on the Pet of the Week newspaper. Um, get a sponsor and have them feature a series of animals. Um, Holly, you guys started that in uh, Lansing with the, the Lansing State Journal sponsoring all those pictures. And that's still, we have businesses that sponsor a, a page full of animals uh, once a month. Be creative, make up an adoption campaign. You know, we're gonna we're gonna do a special on all the black dogs this week. Something like that. Get your name out there. As I said, you need to be sending the press as much information as you can about your organization. You need to be the go-to agency that they're gonna go to. I gotta hurry up here. Um, make the community aware of who you are. Um, one of the biggest things you can do is start collecting your email addresses. Um, collect your email addresses and once a week send out a couple of photos of animals that need adoption. And if email address is cheap, it's easy. Anybody that donates to you, you have got to capture their name, email, address. Because if you're not emailing them, then you need to mail them something once a month. So capture all the information. I don't care if they gave you a dish towel. I <coughs> heard you could die in four years and leave you a million dollars. <laughs> That's true. Somebody used to donate just towels to us at one of the shelters I worked at and then we'll, ten years later left us at 70,000. And then in the previous one, they left over a million. So save those addresses. Keep them on a new <coughs> But use, use email. That's my other doc. shotgun. Um, email, newsletters, Facebook, all that stuff. I wish I could tell you more about that. So that's a whole other session. But you've got to start using that stuff. And every staff member volunteers, potential PR person. We all know that. There's more addresses on that for you. Um, ask for help. <laughs> As a volunteer, after we did an open house, if you're not doing open houses, you should do an open house. It's cheap, it's easy. Everybody will bring the food for you, and it's a great way to get people to know about you. But you need to start bringing people to you. And, and let the volunteers and the supporters pay for it. You don't have to. Rescues, um, most of you are rescues, so I don't, but I'm always pitching the shelters you need to be working with rescues. Um, prison programs, those are on here. 
and collaborations. I can't tell you enough about collaborations. I don't care if you like them or not. You know, call them, have lunch with them, fix any old fences, but you got to collaborate with your other agencies. We cannot bad mouth them. We've got to work with them. Building relationships, same thing again. Mobile adoption units, we do tons. One third of our adoptions come from mobile adoption units. Session eight. So 500 animals last year as a result of our mobile adoption. Work. And it's all done by volunteers, 100%. Um, that's some of them there. Foster programs, I love foster programs because they never come back. <laughs> and we know so much about it. Recognition, you've got to recognize those people. If you hold a luncheon or you do something, we had a humanitarian banquet last night at the Country Club. We honored um, all our volunteers. And it's a sold out event every year. And, uh, and if you ever want to help them how to do it, I can help you with that. I'm so glad <coughs> So in summary, get organized, clean up your house, market your animals, that's the big one, collaborate, ask for help, and thank those people who help you. And that's it.